I can see. All right, so Allison, today, let me just share everything that we're going to discuss with everybody. Um, okay creating your relocation Facebook group. So we wanna learn about how you started the group, um, the differences in this group versus the town community group that I guess you had created before, how you gained members, setting up the group, naming your group, questions to ask when people are joining, what to post, how to turn uh, members into clients, all the things. But if you guys have additional questions, be sure to ask in the chat, or of course, you're more than welcome to come on live. But I'm just so excited to have Allison here. So do you want to just share with everybody a little bit about you before we get started? Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for having me, first of all. Um, I am an agent in New Hampshire. Um, I'm very jealous. I saw the palm trees in the reflection. <laughs> so, so it's nice. actually rainy, like not it's not even snowy here today, so um, a little disappointing. But I am actually with Real Brokerage, and Stevie, you joined um, yes. just recently. So I joined in June. So you know, okay. on you know, same brokerage, and I actually um, moved from Keller Williams. So same kind of journey. Um, I've been in real estate for um, this is this month is actually the start of my seventh year. Um, I have two little ones. Um, they'll be three and five in March. So I do real estate with them all the time. Um, you know, I have a sitter here and there, but they come to showings and closings and um, walkthroughs and, you know, checking all the cabinets to make sure everything is empty. So, um, you know, the Facebook group is a great way for me to lead generate and not be on the phone for hours at a time. So that's kind of where I'm at and um, yeah, and, and an independent agent. So if that helps with what people, you know, where they're at in their business and what kind of structure they have. So do you want me to just jump in with kind of um, the beginning of how I started it and all of that? That would be awesome. And then okay. um, just because I am going to run back inside and so it's going to be loud. So I'm just going to let you take the floor. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so basically, um, I had a I want to say four or five years ago, who was in one town, she was in a smaller town, and then moved to Concord, which is the state capital of New Hampshire, so um, she had bought, saw, uh, sold and bought with me, um, moved to Concord, and then realized there was no great community group in the area. So she's like, hey, do you want to start one? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I started the group with her. Um, it kind of took off in a weird direction. So immediately we started getting a lot of people that were kind of posting like a picture of their business card and they do septic and they do, you know, they're a contractor, they do this and that and the MLMs and all of that. And it was just very spammy. So we ended up creating a rule early on that we would have like a self-promotion thread once a month and it, it, the, the group grew really, really well, but it, it kind of, um, there were a lot of things that happened that made it not a great platform for me to gain business. I literally, in the years that I was running it, I'm still an admin in the group, but I honestly literally don't do anything with the group. Um, I have had zero clients from that. So the group has about 7,000 members. Um, there's a ton of realtors. So as you can imagine, anyone in Concord and honestly, anyone in New Hampshire, that's a realtor is joining this group. So anytime someone's posting, um, Hey, does anyone have a realtor recommendation? It's flooded with, you know, hundreds, literally hundreds of agents. So for me, uh, I thought it was going to be a great way to gain business, but it just was a waste of time, honestly, because there was all of the community group drama. Um, I'd get people messaging me all the time where, you know, someone said this and there's this issue and that's not appropriate for the group, you know, and all of that. So it was kind of an eye opener. You know, I've seen people running these types of groups and I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And, you know, I did it with one of my past clients and it was just such a disaster. So that group has about 7,000 members right now and zero business. The group that I started um, is just called Moving to New Hampshire. And I started it um, about two years ago now. 
And we have almost 800 members. And in the last two years, I've closed 16 clients, just myself. Um, I've probably referred, you know, a handful of clients as well to, um, you know, on the selling side or an area within the state that I don't cover or someone that's kind of thinking about um, wanting to move in New Hampshire so small. So if someone wants to move to like the seacoast of New Hampshire and maybe Maine, I don't cover that um, over in Maine. So then I refer those people over to someone that I know that does. But for me, myself in the last two years, 16 people just from the relocation group. So zero <laughs> over, I think, five years to, you know, 16 in, in two years, I think the numbers kind of speak for itself. So that is kind of why I started the group. And I'm going to go into uh, how I named it and then things to do and things not to do. Uh, and if you have questions, I don't know if I can see comments, but if Stevie, if, if someone like types in a comment, just um, interrupt me and and um, we can chat. So basically, the group, um, I looked through Facebook to see what was already in existence. And there was not a group called Moving to New Hampshire. So like I said, New Hampshire is a small state. And I cover a really large chunk of the state. And I obviously know agents that are in other areas of the state if someone is looking to move here and in, in you know, north of the White Mountains or something, you know, to to two and a half hours away, then I can refer them. So I was looking and there was no group called Moving to New Hampshire. Uh, so I took that name and I recommend picking a name that is searchable. So that's one of the key features of the group is that if you're on Facebook and you're thinking about moving to a state or an area, so like Stevie, yours would probably be moving to Jacksonville um, since you're not encompassing all of Florida. Um, if you have a different, you know, a region that you cover or a city, I would do that. Um, you could also do like moving to NH or relocating to New Hampshire. The, the big thing is you don't want to have the name be something that people wouldn't search. So if I decided to name it like Allison's super duper awesome New Hampshire group, um, you know, it's just one of those things that no one's ever going to find authentically by searching on Facebook. So the way I ended up initially getting people in the group was I would invite, you know, some clients, you know, prospects that were moving from out of state, really because of COVID, there was a lot of people that were already, you know, I'm sure every single one of you feels like everyone was moving to the state that you live in because it was just happening so much with people being able to work from home permanently that, you know, people are doing these huge moves. So it's a really great, great way to take advantage of that. Um, so you'll get people authentically. But what I did was originally, I think I've only done this a couple of times. I am in a few, you know, different face, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, but I'm in a few different, um, for example, homeschooling Facebook groups. So I'm, I'm in those groups, I would post, hey, I'm starting this group called moving to New Hampshire, if anyone is looking to move and wants some great information. Um, you want to check with the group rules first before you post in another group, just so you, you're not spamming. And the best thing to do is just reach out to an admin of that group if you're not sure, um, you know, just posting that it's a value and, you know, that you're looking to help the community. So um, that's just the best way to do it. And I wouldn't post, you know, repeatedly. I would just post once and people will find that post later on too. So the homeschooling group, for example, people who want to move to New Hampshire and homeschool will join that group to find out about the homeschooling scene. So there's going to be a lot of people in those types of groups that aren't necessarily already living in the state. So that's a great way. There's a few, um, not to get like political or anything, but there's a few like health freedom groups for different states, like, you know, New Hampshire, Florida, for example, um, are doing things differently than, you know, New York City or California. So there's a lot of people joining um, those specific types of groups to learn more about like the culture and the, the policies and everything here. 
So figure out, you know, if there's groups that you're in that are kind of specific to your region, figure out if you can post in that group and just, you know, promote your group that way. So just post a link and, and have it there. Like I said, I think I've only posted in these groups maybe twice over the last couple of years. And that's really been a great way to get people initially in the group. And the biggest thing is just having your name searchable so people can, you know, look for, you know, how you look for groups on Facebook and you'll be able to find it. So that's my recommendation for that. Um, so just looking at my, what I said I was talking about. So when people join, the first thing that I have all set up in the group, um, a couple different key pieces. One is going to be having the discussion um, about me section show specifically what the group is about, what value you provide, because people see that before they join the group. And also make sure that you have your information on there so they know a realtor is running the group. My biggest piece of advice, don't allow another agent in the group. Unless, of course, you run a team or you're on a team and you're doing this you know, together with your colleagues. That's one thing. But I don't have any other realtors in this Facebook group. So, of course, I have some people who join the group who are already working with a realtor, they are already, you know, moving here, or they just recently moved here, and that's fine. But I don't have, you know, other realtors, even from out of state. Um, I had one sneak in once, and she was in another state, and she was posting like random things in the group, like marketing herself kind of a deal. So she got removed from the group. Um, but you're not going to have that competition if you're constantly, you know, allowing other realtors in the group, it's going to turn into that other situation. So have it be your group. Make sure it's known that you are a realtor, you're running the group. I also have myself, um, my personal account started the group, but then my business account, so your Facebook business account can be linked to the group. And so you can comment on people's, you know, posts as your business Facebook group. And that helps for people to constantly see mine just says Alison Driscoll Realtor when I make comments. So people are always reminded that I'm not just this random person who started this group. I'm a realtor so I can provide resources. So when people join the group, they have, you know, the series of questions that you have to answer when you join a group. You can create whatever questions you want. I recommend sticking to two questions. Uh, if you do a whole bunch of them, people don't actually read them or if it's too much of a hassle, they just won't wanna join the group. So my first question is, why are you joining the group? The big piece of that, you don't wanna have a yes or no question. You don't wanna say, are you moving to New Hampshire? Because people who are, you know, the bots or the spammers, they just put yes. And so when I see yes, as that response, you can pretty much tell that it's, you know, a bot and you just delete them. And the second question is, um, can you, or will you share your email for monthly uh, emails from Allison to keep up with the New Hampshire real estate market, goings on events, et cetera, um, just word it however you want. So that way um, I get their email when they join um, I used to have phone and email and I got some more people that would say, I don't want to share that information. So for me, email is fine. And what I do with that is I actually, um, I do a monthly email on MailChimp. Um, I use Zapier to connect it. So what happens, actually, I'll step back. So I use, um, it's called Group Leads. I started using it maybe six months ago. And there's a couple different types of add-ons. So it's a Chrome extension. You pay for it monthly, but then for Black Friday, they had this deal. If you were already paying for it monthly, you can sign up for like a lifetime unlimited um, version of it. So I did that. So what happens is anytime someone requests to join the group, 
the only thing that's a pain is you have to do it on your computer. You can't, it won't connect when you're doing it on your phone because it's a Chrome extension. So usually in the evenings, I'll check to see, you know, who's requested to join the group. And then I will, you know, add them in. And what happens is every time I click accept, then all those people go into a spreadsheet in Google Docs. So it has, it's really neat because it has their name, their answers to the questions. So it'll say, why are you looking to join this group? And if they say, you know, I currently live in Tennessee and I'm looking to move to New Hampshire in 2023 and I have a, my grandkids are in New Hampshire. So it will have, I don't have to, I literally used to take the response and copy and paste it into Google Docs. And now group leads um, just automatically puts it in. The other great thing is I can click on their name in my Google Docs and I can pull up their Facebook profile. It also has like the metadata. So it'll tell me when they join Facebook, um, usually we'll have some other information. So it's really easy for me to like click through and see who these people are. And then it obviously has their email. So from that, I use Zapier where I made a zap. If you don't know how it works, you tell it, you know, if this happens, then it makes something else happen. So once that spreadsheet gets updated, it will take all of the updates and it will add it to my MailChimp. So I'm not manually putting everyone into my monthly newsletter. And that way it's, you know, every month when I Put out a new newsletter and you can do it more often just this kind of um series of monthly emails works for me if i'm doing like really a fun event or something extra i'll do other newsletters but i just do um pretty much a, a regular monthly newsletter so they get a monthly newsletter it's for those people in the group it's for my current and past clients it's for my sphere of influence it's for you know prospects so it's not specific to those people but i really keep them in mind so in my newsletter i will have for example the other month i did one on the regions of new hampshire so one page it had like a nice graphic and it had you know the different regions of New Hampshire. So, you know, seacoast and what the major cities are and some information. So if you're looking to move to New Hampshire and have no idea where to start, then you see that and it's a good resource for you. And it's not like annoying or anything to other people. I'll do things like um, every month I do events and it will have throughout the whole state different events that I highlight and I stick that on my Instagram. It goes in the newsletter. I also post it in the group. So I'm reusing materials that are specific for that group that I've made, but also other, you know, platforms I can use it on. So they might not live here yet, but they want to know, you know, what kind of activities are there. So I'm creating things of value to share with them versus just being like, I'm a realtor, use me as your realtor um, and pestering them that way. So that's one thing that I do is I just make sure I try to add things of value that will be of interest to them, but also work for all types of people. Um, some of the ways that I turn them from prospects to clients, um, th there's a few things that I do. So for the group, I will... Um, I'll make posts that are relatable or I'll do surveys and try to get to know them. So I might, for example, you know, ask in a survey for those who are moving here, have you visited New Hampshire before? And you'll be surprised that people want to move here and they've never stepped foot in the state. And sometimes conversations will happen. And I try to be really um, good about responding quickly so they can see that I'm responsive. I'm getting to know these people and I'm not just this, you know, person who, you know, moderates the group, I'm actively involved. Um, I will do either like, um, I used to do either Facebook Lives or Zooms and now I just do Zooms. So I will do a Zoom call, you know, just like this. And I will post, you know, it on the group in, a, in advance that we're gonna have one and I'll have different topics. 
and the I'll go over some of the topics, but the reason I do a Zoom is that if you're on Facebook and you see like a live pop up, you might click on it and you don't actually care and you just, you know, you stopped in for a second. I don't want to know about that. I don't really care. I want to know who is actively watching the content I'm putting out. So if someone goes through, clicks on the Zoom, joins the Zoom, and learns all about a specific topic, and they find it beneficial, sometimes they just reach out to me after and say, hey, you know, I really liked um, what you were talking about. Can we not talk more specific about my situation? Of course. So some of the topics that I've done, I've done the basic buying process, you know, just walking through what it looks like to buy a home here. I did a Zoom with my preferred lender and we talked about um, the lending process, the types of loans, things to know about you know, New Hampshire specifically. Um, I've done one on home inspection items that are specific to living here. So a lot of people I work with didn't have basements before or didn't have to worry about septic systems and you know things of that nature. So having a home inspector come on and talk about things that kind of worry people is really helpful. And honestly, it's nice because I get to have this conversation with a whole bunch of people and not have the same conversation over and over again and kind of dispel myths that people are all thinking. I really want to do one. I have one planned with the person who runs the homeschool coalition here to talk about homeschooling in New Hampshire, the laws, regulations, what it looks like, um, different communities, resources, all of that. Because um, obviously a lot of people who join my group have joined from those homeschooling groups, you know, so I want to have resources specific for them. Um, another one I want to do is uh, ask my past clients who relocated here um, things that they wish they knew before moving here, um, you know, maybe things that they were surprised by, things they love about the state. So just information for people that are thinking about moving here, and it's also going to showcase their experience working with me. So Zooms are really powerful. Uh, like I said, I've had people reach out to me right after asking questions and saying, hey, can we connect and have a call? And other times, you know, I'll reach out to those people and say, hey, I saw that you joined the Zoom on, um, you know, the, the home buying process in New Hampshire. Let me know if I can answer more questions. So I'm taking a more active role in, you know, who they are and what they're about. Um, when they join the group, I don't tend to just like reach out to them and spam them with, hey, I'm a realtor. Can I help you? So I think, you know, having them in the group, um, I can see, you know, to some people will post it. Um, they're just kind of looking and, you know, exploring and figuring out if they even want to move here. Um, with all of all of this, um, the big thing is you want to be involved and known as the realtor and people are busy oh yeah so can i request can i repeat the second question that you asked before they join so the first one is why do you want to join and the second question is will you share your email um to get allison's monthly emails and new hampshire updates that kind of a deal so a way to to grab their email um, when people are, are in the group and you can as opposed to having a special group, could you do a zoom call from your social media accounts? Yeah, absolutely. So if you wanted to do like a relocation zoom call or something, you could definitely do it. And if you're on Instagram, for example, you can post a link. Um, now they have the option. It's been around for a little while where you can just, um, swipe down and, or, it's in that little box up top. So you can click on that and then it'll have a spot for a link and then you can just put the Zoom link in there. Same thing if you do it on your personal account or on your business Facebook account or within another group, you can you can definitely say, hey, I'm doing a Zoom about relocating to wherever and, and do that. Um, I'm trying to remember what we were talking about before. I have a so, couple, um, yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. How consistent are you posting in this group? 
Um, it varies. So I don't try to do like a set, like I'm going to post five times a week or anything like that. I try to make it as more authentic as possible, but, um, I'm, I'm doing at least a few times a week. So I'm, I'm probably doing like three to five times a week that I'm posting. And obviously every time someone posts a question, I'm always answering the question from my business page. So it says Allison Driscoll Realtor when I'm responding to them. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah. How often is the Zoom calls that you do? I'm not sure if you had said it or, or not. Um, I've probably done like one a month. I want to do probably two a month. Um, and the other thing I just did, which I've, I'm already having good success with people signing up, is um, I don't know how to say it, but Calendly. Calendly, <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes. Um, so Calendly. I posted a link for that and mm -hmm. it was just like a 30 minute um, call. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, happy new year. Um, if anyone has plans on moving to New Hampshire in 2023, I'd love to chat with you. Here's a link to sign up for a call. And I've had a few people um, sign up for that, which is That's great. Awesome. Yeah. This is such a great topic. Um, Thanks. When, you, when you do the Zoom call, Mm -hmm. um are you promoting this ahead of time in the group like hey i'm gonna be going live yeah so okay. similar to to what you do in your group, yeah. you know you're posting it you know if i let's say i plan it out a week in advance then mm -hmm. i'll post it then and then i'll put a reminder you know like a, a couple of days before and then usually the day of so just so people know yeah. because gonna... you know everyone's just so busy and yeah. everyone's part of multiple groups and all of that yeah. so so I guess, do you always, sorry, I, have, I wrote down so many questions, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you, um, oh, record the calls and like leave a, a replay up there? So I haven't, but I've been kind of contemplating back and forth, like yeah. if I want to or not, because I like that people join and I know that they're interested Yeah. and I can't catch those people when they're watching the replay, but right. it's still good value. And I'm leaning towards doing that because like I just started a YouTube um, page and I'm like, maybe I'll post them up there because they are valuable. Um, and, you know, I could share pieces of it on Instagram and things like that. So I think I might start doing that. But right now I don't. Yeah, I think that is like all really amazing ideas. And then if you're doing it twice a month, like there's opportunities for them to pop on the next one. So I really like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's different topics all the time. So I'm yeah. not doing like the buying process once a month. It's kind of what, you know, I, I'm, I'm reading into what the group is looking for. So for example, like, you know, the first snow that we had, I posted like a video of my rooster out in the snow and, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a funny, like I, I try to do it. like, not just like, you know, I'm in real estate, real start. you know, yeah, real estate um, I do post, um, kind of a little tangent. So I do post, um, when someone goes under contract with me, um, I post a little, a graphic and it has, um, like the state that they're moving from to the state that they are you know, not the state, but the area in New Hampshire that they're moving in. So it has like an arrow, like a little airplane. And so it says, congratulations. And then I tag them um, for going under contract. And then once they close with me, I post like the picture, you know, on like people do on Instagram. So I post the image. I literally will cross post these. So I'll post an image of, you know, the house or whatever, and I'll have the address, but then I don't tag them because I don't want, you know, like people knowing like who they are and their location and everything, but it, it does like a, a two-part you know, the first one, when they go under contract, then we're celebrating them and that they're making this big move and all of that. And then people are seeing, obviously I'm, I'm legit. I actually do business. I'm not just like, you know, this random person doing this group. Um, and then they can see, you know, that they've closed on the property and they can kind of, you know, one, get a sense of the types of housing that's available and, and all of that. And then usually when I do post that, you know, the person who bought the house, you know, will comment like, thank you so much. I had a really great experience, blah, blah, blah. And I do post my client reviews. So I really make sure to always get a testimonial, um, you know, just on my Google business page and any of them that are relocation related, I always post in the group. So the big thing, you know, with doing the Zoom calls, posting when you go under contract, all of that, 
you want to um, kind of balance it with you know, you asking questions, you doing like surveys to find out about the people in the group, um, answering questions, you know, for example, people are like terrified of ticks and, you know, want to know what to do about ticks in New Hampshire. So those types of topics I'll talk about. So I'm adding a lot of value and answering all those questions and not just promoting myself as a realtor. I love that. Have you ever had anybody not show up for the Zoom call? Um, well, it, it'll be like a, a group like this. It'll be like yeah, anyone yeah. who wants to join. Um, oh yeah. So have I had, um, no, so there are always at least like one person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I've always okay. had at least a couple of people. So, yeah. yep. oh, that's good. And I feel like if, you know, I've seen, cause I, I would do this, um, before I, I used to, I'm a big hiker. So I used to do like hiking seminars and stuff like that. And so I used to to do that. And I kind of learned from doing that before, you know, make sure that you give advance notice and then also remind them a couple of times so they yeah, can hop yeah. on it and they know about it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, well, I do have to hop onto another call for those asking, I am going to have, um, I have this recorded and I will add it to YouTube later today, but was there anything else that you wanted to leave us with? I literally wrote down so many notes and thought this was extremely yeah. valuable. <laughs> so, um, a couple of things that I want to say, um, it doesn't have to be a relocation group. So mm -hmm. I know people do like military relocation, which is, you know, similar. Um, but if you have some sort of a niche that you want to provide value for, for example, so if I wanted to do like a uh, New Hampshire homeschooling, you know, families group or something like that, um, anything that you want to do um, that helps a specific group of people who want to move. Um, and oh, this, is my, this is my kid's room. <laughs> Um, so whenever I want to, um, do some sort of a group like that, if, if you're looking to do this, I would just make sure that you are not adding other realtors, you're providing lots of value and just, it's a lead source. So you want to treat it that way. So this is like, instead of me spending two hours doing cold calls every day, I'm working this group. So just, you know, treat it like it's part of your business and, yeah, I think it'll be really, really successful. And I think that, um, you know, just make sure that you find a niche that isn't overly used. So if you look into this and you see like, oh, there's five relocation groups just for my city, you know, maybe think about what you can do that's different. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. Of course. This is so helpful. Do you want to share your Instagram in case people want to go follow you over there? Yeah. So I'm at Allison Driscoll Realtor. So Allison with two L's and an I. Um, yeah. So yeah, Allison Driscoll Realtor. So, and then I'm friends with you on there, Stevie. So if you click through oh, yeah. her Instagram, you can find me as well. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thanks. And if anyone has questions, feel free to just DM me and ask, and I'll be happy to help. Awesome. Thank you. I'll chat with you soon. All right. Bye. bye.